this is not a witch hunt, except that witches are a hunting. This is true. Hi, guys. Hello. I don't yet know if there's going to be a theme song for this, but here we go. Uh, if there was a theme song, it's probably just our regular theme song, and we just won't have an ending theme. Hey, you Because know, I've, I've, I've been trying, and nothing has been coming to mind, so I don't think I'm going to bother. If there isn't a theme song, there may be one at some point. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, this is whatever this is. Yes, this is the special reboot edition of Charm Chats for yeah. Patreon only. Patreon exclusive. Woo -woo. Um, so this is going to be a much different format to what y'all might be used to. Much, much different. Um, because I'm in charge of this shit. Yep. So basically where they have are three pages of notes while watching and then a five and a half page summary. Hey, you know. Of what happened in the episode because goodness knows I've heard a lot of people talking about how they don't actually want to watch it. Mm -hmm. So we figure, you know, we'll give you the general idea of what happens in the episode and then discuss it. Yep. So here goes that summary. Don't worry, it's a small notebook, so five and a half pages is not as long as it sounds. This is true. Okay. Mel and Maggie Vera head out for a fun night, but are compelled to return home after an urgent text from their mother. They return only to find their mother has fallen out of the attic window and died. Three months later, Mel is continuing her mother's work of protesting a university professor who was reinstated despite multiple sexual harassment claims. Maggie is rushing a sorority and Macy Vaughn, a scientist, has accepted a job at the university under the aforementioned professor. Macy, upon seeing the Vera's house, realizes that Marisol is the mother she was told died in her youth by her dad. Her late dad, I should mention. Her sudden appearance at their door, unfortunately, does not give her the result she desires. Not only that, it causes all three women to begin displaying supernatural abilities. Macy, turns out, can move objects with her mind. Mel finds out during a coffee with her detective ex-girlfriend that she is freezing time, and Maggie's final sorority rush is somewhat hampered when she finds herself privy to everyone's private thoughts. And they are not kind. Everything is laid bare by Harry, the new women's studies chair, and apparently the girl's white lighter, when he magically kidnaps them to their own attic and monologues at them. It seems that the girls are not just witches, but the charmed ones, and they have 48 hours to decide whether or not they want to keep their powers. At this point, only Mel is firmly in the yes camp, and the other two try and go about their normal business and pretend their lives are still normal. This proves difficult when Maggie is attacked by a demon dog and Macy is enlisted for her scientific know-how. Armed with baking soda and determination, Macy and Mel head to the sorority, where Maggie has just been inducted. After Mel mistakenly sprinkles the sorority head with the baking soda, Macy manages to save Maggie from her demon-possessed ex-boyfriend. The girls return home for some sister bonding, and Macy realizes that they haven't yet found the demon who killed their mother. Next morning, Mel, at this point having gone to the rally against the uh, aforementioned professor, senses the cold that marks the demon they're looking for and follows it into the lab. There, Professor Thane reveals himself to be the demon Tadius, who drains women of their power. Maggie and Macy arrive on the scene just in time, calling Harry to save the asshole undergrad Cam who stumbled in with them and got impaled. The girls all say the spell they found in the Book of Shadows, vanquishing the demon, but not before he tells them that he was not the one who killed their mother. Despite this literally chilling revelation, the girls all take solace in Evil Defeated, and Mel and Maggie help move Macy into their house. Mel finds their mom's old Ouija board, and the girls all try to contact her. The message that comes through, however, is ominous. Don't trust Harry. And thus ends the episode. It's... That was about as succinct as I could make it. That was very succinct. Should we give, like, first impressions of the girls? Yeah, we can we can do that. Okay, so right away, Macy, huge nerd. I call her science sister. Yes, and I enjoy her. I enjoy her very much. Um, um, Mel is a social justice witch. Mel, I I hope they let her evolve because right now, 
my brain is just seeing her as a one-dimensional man-hating lesbian, and I dislike her a lot. I mean, we don't know that she's a lesbian. We just know that her ex is a woman. But that, mm-hmm. from from what we have seen so far from her... Yeah, we have seen... I mean, this episode entirely was about her learning to let go of anger. Because yeah. that's how she controls her power, is by not, not being, being angry. angry. Right. Although is... I, could, I never saw any, like, triggering movements. Like, Macy kind of had the thing where she would, like, focus, and then it would... Things would move, like, in her face. Yeah. Um, obviously... Uh, Maggie touches people, and that's how she gets that. Yeah, Maggie is my favorite so far. Um, but I wasn't seeing any, like, physical indications of Mel using her power. Mm-hmm. I gotta say, of the sound effects that happen, I like Maggie's sound effect for her power the best. Yeah, I I enjoy... We're... Okay, so here's the biggest thing, at least for me, is I'm trying very hard not to compare this mm-hmm. to the original series. Yeah, the girls are very Because different. it is very different. And mm-hmm. and in that respect, I kind of wish they hadn't called it Charmed. I kind of wish they had, had come with it as it's a new concept type thing and not called it Charmed. Apparently someone tried that and called it like the secret circle or something. Yeah, there's been a couple of different yeah. things. And... and For me personally, I like the changes that they made if I'm not looking at it as a charmed reboot. Well, and then, like, it's kind of the elephant and the aspirin. Like, at what point does the original concept become unrecognizable? Because I still very much see the original concept Mm -hmm. of charmed in this and in that I am accepting this as being a reboot, like, despite all of the changes. But I I understand how you would see that. But you have lived with the original series much longer. Yes, absolutely. And I think for me personally, I... How do I say this so it makes sense? I like the fact that they're coming at this from a different angle Mm -hmm. than the original. I like that it's been updated, because you have to. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't mind the fact that they've changed up the the premonition power is now a mind reading thing when she's touching someone. I like that because that'll bring in way different storylines. Yeah. And it gives them different things to play with. Mm -hmm. I like that they've kept some things, like the oldest sister is the one that can move things with her mind. Mm Mm-hmm. And the middle sister is the one that can freeze things. I like those things that they've kept. But there were a few things that they brought in as, like, nods to the original. Like, when they got the Book of Shadows, they open it, and the first page you see is Melinda Warren. That was nice. It was a nice nod. However, and I, I, I put this in my notes, is that I'd be okay with them with this show if it was, like, a future If this took place in the future, because they show that picture of Melinda Warren so that the original Charmed Ones, or at least their line, their ancestral line, exists in this world Mm -hmm. because they have Melinda Warren. So if this takes place, like, in a future where the Halliwell girls and, and their entire family are dead and gone, and these are the new Charmed Ones, I'm kind of okay with that. And see, like, that doesn't bother me. I don't really care about retconning because it's meant to be a completely... It's it's meant to just, like, be the the same sort of concept, but just, like, hey, here's where we're taking it in this day and age. My biggest thing is that I hope that they don't try and make these girls descendants of Melinda Warren. I mean, clearly they are. Not necessarily. Well, I mean, they're... Why else wouldn't Melinda Warren be in the book? Like, I'm, I'm saying this is and, where I think the showrunners are going. Right. And this is why I'm saying, for me personally, if it's just a nod to the original where she's in the book because she was a really powerful witch, then I'm okay with it. Yeah, it doesn't bother me either way. But I hope that they don't try and say that these are the charm ones who are from her line. Because that that's just disrespectful to the original. I don't see my it mind. that way, personally. I don't know. I, I think that's the only thing really, truly that for me is disrespectful Disrespectful, if they try to make them descendants of Melinda Warren. Yeah, I don't get that at all. 
then that's fine. Shrug. I, yeah. I, I think because there's a lot of things that... Honestly, that's... honestly, I think it... Just because of the naming convention is now all M's, so the Melinda thing, like, tracks for me, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, we just all kept M's yeah. along the entire line, and, like, some races is probably going to be like, but they're Latina. I'm like, uh, yeah, like, people marry in? Like, their last yeah. name is Vera, so... Yeah. Just whatever. And and Macy is Vaughn. So. Yeah, Macy is a uh, mixed race. Yeah. Like, I think... Th- like I said, there's there's a few things that they updated that I don't mind the updates. Like mm-hmm. the, the white lighter orby like thing. Yeah, changing. it looked kinda of like an atom. Like yeah, like, atom like changing model. to a whoosh thing. I kind of enjoyed that. Like like that's as it's, much as I love Leo and his white lighter orby whatever, uh-huh. I don't I didn't mind it. I'm just still not completely convinced that Harry is actually a white lighter. Mm-hmm. And I'm really annoyed that they named him Harry. I mean, seriously. He's played by a Rupert. Yeah. Like, you couldn't have given him a more British name? Like, I understand there's Prince Harry, but that's, like, the only one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, really? And Greenwood isn't that british of a last name. Although it really amuses me that they had him, like, be an academic, a feminist academic. That amuses the crap out of me. Like, he has a career. He's been published. Yeah. Which is the only reason he's able to, like, take over as chair of the Women's Studies Department. Right. Which in this day and age, kind of a faux pas, but, like... Well... I just, I just where... amuses me that he decided to pursue a career, and that was his in, as opposed to, like, you know, just having, like, a, a regular old job in the town. But, hey, he wanted to be close, and... Yeah. Obviously, since Marisol, her entire thing was Women's Studies... That makes sense as an in-road there. Yeah. I I think because so far we've only seen the first episode and we don't know what's happening yet. No. I, I think for me personally, I still don't necessarily trust that he's the white lighter. Or if he is their white lighter, then I don't trust that the Ouija board is Marisol talking to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this episode... Much like Harry lives for the drama. Yeah. Like, Harry very much lives for the drama. He's all about the monologue. And he's like, this was part of my speech. How dare you interrupt me? Like, mm. well, that's part of him being a British man from the 50s. I, <laughs> it was just really hilarious. And then the crack he makes about, oh, we must have to do one last thing to this demon before it'll fucking disappear. And then it goes away and he's like, ah, I was joking. Yeah. Like, Sometimes this it just man, takes a bit. This man fucking lives for the drama. I also really like how the vanquish takes a second. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. like, like it does give that little sense of, like, is it really gone? Is it really gone? Did we do it? Did we do it? Yeah, this it reminds <sighs> me of a bit in, um, in Thrilling Adventure Hour in A Beyond Belief where, like, there was a double vampire. <laughs> yeah. Where they just take four times as long to die from a stake to the heart. Not that it takes four stakes. It's just it takes four times as long before they disappear. Yeah. I did like, however, how they had the charmed logo come in mm-hmm. with the unbreaking of glass. Yeah, that was really that cool. That was a really, really cool visual thing. Yeah. And I love I love their attic. Like, again, it doesn't look like it fits in the house. No, it really doesn't. That attic like, is huge. I, I get that as a TV convention of, it's kind of a TARDIS. Like, it's bigger mm-hmm. on the inside because we have to fit all these fucking cameras in here. Yeah. And have a bunch of props that we may need to, like, just pull out, like... I that's did. a that's a suspension of disbelief I have zero problem with. Yeah, no, also, I, don't I have really enjoy that. that the house kind of looks like the original house. It's I like it's that it's still a, a very little, pretty Victorian. I like that it's a cute little pretty pink Victorian, and it's not as quite ostentatious as the original house. I or it's I kind read, of ugly fuchsia. I don't know. I don't know. I looked up, and it is apparently the house that was used in the show Witches of East End. So there's That's that little cute. connection, which is cute. I really like that they kept it a Victorian house mm-hmm. because that is, yeah. that just, I love a Victorian house. I like that they made up a town. That's the other thing is that we're, we're in a, the fictional town that is called Hilltown. Hilltown with or an E at the end. Helltown, as Macy's friend tells her to say. Yeah. Um, also, I, I have to say, Harry's introduction to Mel was the best one line introduction 
I have heard. Where he's mm. like, I read your article and I felt like my penis was being chopped off. And she's like, you read it right then. Yep. That amused the crap out of me. Because it was also a little deferential. Yeah. I I think... I think for me, the one thing that I have to say in, in this particular um, show is that it has a message with a capital M. Mm-hmm. And that's great, but it seems a bit forced. Yeah. In, like, that's, super forced, especially little, in this episode. It was a little bit on the nose for me. A little? Well, see, like, everything... The the one negative comment I would say about the entire episode is that it felt rushed. A lot of the emotional stuff didn't feel like it had a, quite enough set up. Mm-hmm. And, I, and in this way, I did try and compare it to the original Charmed pilot because that felt like it worked. Mm-hmm. Like they were able to write the characters in a way where all of the introductory stuff got by really quick Mm -hmm. and you were able to get into the actual plot of the episode. I think where they got tripped up in this was that they're trying to employ um, a storyline that wasn't in the original pilot. Right. The whole, like, Macy, oh, we didn't know your mom. Like, I like the, I like the way that they made this work, because instead of having to retcon a bunch of stuff they'd already said, like, okay, we're starting off with this, and then we don't have to, like, come back to it later. Yeah. Um, but I think having to add in all of that plot made everything else n- n- have to take less time, and that, that's where we kind of yeah went a little bit awry. I, like I said, I, I think having a capital M message is mm-hmm. great. Um, and I, I kind of enjoyed the, the little sprinkling in of, of things of, of, you know, that their mother tells them that they have to, you know, their bond as sisters is the, is the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, the, the mouthing. Yeah, and, and, and you can tell because Maggie mouths along with her that she's said this their entire lives. Yeah. And so I, I liked that. Yeah, bit Maggie because, and Mel immediately feel like sisters. Right. And, and. In a very cute way. Yeah. Um, and then when when Macy comes in and she says the same thing that their mother has said in that little moment, it's like, oh, OK, you really are one of this family. OK, yeah. cool. Yeah. And later on, when Maggie tells her, oh, if you've been my sister for longer, I would totally kick your ass or whatever. Yeah. Like, I, I enjoy them as sisters at the end. Mm-hmm. It That part works for me when when they were when they were in that that moment that 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 um i'm gonna not remember their names for a bit when mel kind of does like the whisper thing oh yeah yeah. that her powers only work when she's not angry yeah that scene right there was my favorite scene in the entire episode because that's when they became after the after the I think it was a fraternity house, actually. Yeah. Like, they used different Greek letters when when Maggie texted them about where she was. Yeah, I don't so know. So I'm thinking they must have been at a fraternity house, because generally, in my experience, guys are not allowed into sorority houses, like, at all. Right. Or they, if they are, Yeah, they were only... at the frat party. Well, they were at an initiation, but I'm thinking the Kappa Tau Kappa, or whatever the fuck it was, initiation was being held at, like, the Sigma Upsilon, or whatever the fuck, frat. Yeah, I didn't pay because the Greek in letters. sororities, at least in my experience, men are only allowed into the like lobby waiting area. That's as far as they're allowed. They're not allowed into the kitchen. They're not allowed upstairs. Like it's a whole to do. Yeah. Um, and so I f- I feel like that was never really explained in a way that felt like it was cut for time or whatever. Yeah. No. And and my my annoyance with the sorority thing was just because I have I have a personal annoyance with sororities. Yeah. Actually, that character and I felt was well written to be annoying the head of the kappa oh yeah yeah like she was very annoying in a written way not in a like oh this is like a stereotypical like sorority girl it's like no 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 no. she's she is a very political in her own world person and it's very obvious yeah and that is what makes her annoying i Personally, I have an issue with with sororities and fraternities with this whole rush week thing, mm-hmm. because I have this thing where 
I've been bullied my entire life. I've been made fun of all of these things. And Rush Week is one big bully you, f like be mean to you and be horrible to you for a week. But now you're in. So now we like you. Mm -hmm. And now we'll be nice to you for the rest of your life. Like, yeah. why do you have to be mean to me for me to be here? That, yeah. I just don't like that as a, as a physical thing for me. I do not enjoy that. And mm -hmm. therefore... I do not enjoy the yeah. They weren't the really thought process. They weren't really bringing that into this at all, other no, than the whole like, "Hey, we've kidnapped you from your front porch." Yeah. Um. But Which, that was that was more played for like, "Oh shit, a demon!" sort of feels as opposed to, "Oh shit, she's getting haze." Which like there was no there was no hazing in this episode, which I thought was nice. Like other than the "Hey, bag over your head," and now we're gonna reveal that you've been inducted, like kind of thing. Yeah, I I think also. There were those, there was a little those, bit of cattiness and like there was a bit of cattiness and passive and, aggressivity. Yeah, and there was the the moment of like when you first see the 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 boyfriend the the, the or the I should say the friend who is a boy who wants to be a boyfriend the ex boyfriend yeah um when when you first see him you get that like oh he's gonna be a bad guy vibe because. Mm. Because I was kind of like leaning on the fence whether or not he was. Well, I think for for I, me I, watching yeah. every male that they showed, yeah. I immediately was like, okay, which one of these is going to be the bad guy? Yeah, you know, because Cameron's an incel. Professor Thane is a sexual predator d bag. Yeah, and uh, Brian, I think is his name, clearly believes himself to be in the friend zone. Yeah, there there's a lot of of. The only no no hang on there's there's one good guy. Macy's friend. Macy's friend. Yes. Oh yes yes yeah, but we didn't see nearly enough of him. Yeah, I kind of hope he comes back. I got a good vibe from him. Yeah, but again, it's it's the because I've seen the original mm -hmm. and because I have that like that background in in my head. I automatically am like, okay, well, which one of these boys is going to try and kill them first? Yeah. And it's not just the which one is going to try and kill them. It's which one's going to try and kill them first. That's the biggest thing. Is like, because I know that more than one of these is going to be a bad guy. You know? And I kind of wish, if I'm being completely honest, I kind of wish that I hadn't seen the trailer. Right. Because if I had just gone into this completely cold, I would have had a slightly different thought process of, of Harry. Okay. Um, because immediately when I see him, I was like, I was like, okay, I'm getting Buffy vibes because they've turned him into a British guy, but like, not in a good way. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, because I've seen the trailer, I know he's going to turn out to be their white lighter. Yeah. But I'm not feeling it from this guy. Like I'm, I'm, I'm feeling some bad guy vibes here. And then he kidnaps them and ties them up in their own attic. And I'm like, see, I fucking knew it. See, my favorite part of that scene is when they all come to, he's sitting with his legs artfully crossed on the table. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, I get that you're from the 50s, so you're kind of a D-bag, but you've lived this entire time, and you don't think, hey, this is going to be really alarming how relaxed you look. Yeah. I also think it's very interesting, and this is why I'm, I'm, I have that he might not really be a white lighter thing, mm -hmm. is... He has way more powers than we've seen white lighters really have in that he can tie them and untie them with just a wave of a hand. Uh, conjuring, the, I think, is, yeah, is what like, I'm going to call he, that. He has, he, because, again, comparing it to the original, mm -hmm. Leo didn't have that sort of thing. He could do the healing thing. Yeah. Which I like that they changed the healing thing to, to just a small little light. Yeah. Like, it's not this huge thing. It's just this tiny little light. And I light like that whenever hand. he uses it, he's got, like, a deadpan face on. Well, he only uses it twice. But, like, in this episode, like, there's the one on, 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 on Maggie's, Maggie's face. face yeah. And then when they look at Cameron, who's been impaled, he just kind of goes, like, done. Yeah. I, <laughs> and Cameron just crumples, crumples to the, to the floor. Floor. I, I also think it's interesting, though, that, that that means that either they've changed it where he can heal the dead or Cameron wasn't completely dead. I don't think he was completely dead. I'm hoping that it's that he wasn't completely dead. I, because... I don't think he was completely dead. I, I, either way, I don't think they're going to introduce that particular snafu when there's so many other things to deal with in this episode. Yeah, I, I do like that that he seems 
slightly passive aggressive about it. Uh huh. It's like, really, you want me to save this dude? Fine. Really, you don't want me to wipe his mind? Like, this is how we do it. And they're like, mm. I do have to admit that I did like that. That though. was yeah, yeah. Where where it was kind of that like you know, it was no see, one will believe you. That was a that was a fun callback. I thought. Yeah. It's like oh, because there was the scene where Mel is very very carefully stapling all of the posters to that giant poster wall. Mm-hmm. I was amazed at the all convenience of them all fitting without being yeah. overlapped. Um, that yeah. was hilarious to me, from a design standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, but like. She's stapling all of them, and he's and Cameron's like arguing with her. He's like, "It's he said, she said." And she's like, "Yeah, three she saids, mm-hmm. and then three she saids." Yeah, by the seashore. That that's a tongue twister. It is. Um, I like that they that they redid that, and I kind of as much as I I like I said capital M message when they were in the the frat house. And and Mel is telling the the kissing fraternity people yeah. that telling the girl that she can can re- rescind her consent at any time. Yeah, and then that comes back with See, with Maggie I feel, and the ex boyfriend. I feel like the full sentence being repeated as a callback was a bit much. Yeah, it was a bit clunky. She could have just said, "That's not how consent works." And yeah, there was ooh Pilates. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was a, a few times where I didn't I didn't exactly like the writing. Mm-hmm. Because it could have been condensed in a better way. Yeah. But I didn't completely hate it. No, me neither. And and I'm excited. I laughed a lot during this episode. Yeah. I'm excited Both to see times. where it goes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing is, is if I'm watching it not as a, it's a remake, mm-hmm. but just as a show. Yeah. As a show using the original concept. And to be fair, like, it's not like all of the tropes and stuff that the original charm used hadn't already been used somewhere else. Right. Like, so the fact that they're like, oh, you know what? This thing that the original charm did, we think works for like plot things. Like the fact that one of their exes is a detective mm-hmm. who has the best fucking wardrobe. It's so <laughs> not a detective wardrobe yeah. because she's like a fucking fashion clothes horse. Yeah, out of all of the sisters, I... It was really funny, the scene where um, Detective Hamada and her partner are in the living room talking with Mel. Um, her partner looks like your generic detective. Like, he's a little rumpled, but he's, like, wearing a jacket, and he's generally, like, professional-ish. And then Nico's like, I'm wearing this great blazer and this lovely shirt. I'm like, you are so distracting right now. You're too <laughs> well-dressed for this yeah. job. I was like, God damn it, you're pretty. Knock it off. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I have to say, I did like the clothes that they were all in. I kind of enjoyed the fact that it started out with with Maggie trying to steal Mel's clothes to go to this thing yeah. because she didn't have... Anything that ugly. A, anything that ugly. Yeah. Like, it, I, I enjoy them as sisters. Mm-hmm. I really do. I enjoy them as sisters. I enjoy the way that they have made them feel like family. Yeah. Even though they don't necessarily look like they actually are related. Well, no, but, like, neither really did the original girls. They just had vaguely the same face shape. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing is... Other than, of course, uh, Alyssa Milano's extremely pointy chin. Well. It's... Yeah. She is a witch. Oh, yeah. I have... (laughs) I have... I, I do enjoy that... They seem to now be a much closer unit, mm-hmm. and and I can, I'm very excited to see where this goes and and how it evolves, and how their characters become less one dimensional. Yes, because right now, in this first episode, they are fairly one dimensional, mm-hmm. especially Mel. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that now that she realizes that her power doesn't come from anger, that she will calm the fuck down and she'll actually develop a personality. I mean, she started to, for sure. Yeah. And I think that's... Or she started to regain a personality. Yeah. Obviously, like, the trauma of her mother dying. I I think that's the the biggest thing is is that she just didn't seem like she had a personality other than being one-dimensional man-hater. Well, yeah, and I, I feel like that had a, a fairly decent plot basis that they can now move on from. Exactly. Speaking of the mother dying, 
I want. I'm trying to figure out how she supposedly fell from the attic window. I mean, like gravity? that. But that window is quite high up. It's not that high up. It's a big window. I think it was just more because the way that the window broke, there was like broken glass at the bottom of the window, and if she fell out of that window, she would have been cut. And there was not a single I mean, also, scratch mark on her. It's a clearly supernatural death, we now know. Well, yeah. And, I mean, but the, that, de- the detectives would not have looked for... They're like, oh, well, she fell, she died, she has alcohol in her blood. Like, closed case, it's an accident. Like, the something flew, something broke the window when she went to look out at, at what happened, she fell through. Like, I, I can see definitely the detectives, you know, ignoring that particular fact. I guess so. Besides, if it's a supernatural death, something probably threw her out the window. Well, yeah. I mean, I understand logistically... Or grabbed her out of the window and dangled her and then let her fall. You know. Yeah. I, I know how logistically it happens if it's a supernatural death. But yeah. it's the fact that they were like, oh, she committed suicide, jumped out the window. No, they like, wouldn't have said suicide. Like, they would have no. said accident. Whatever. Either way. Like, you know, oh, it's an accidental death. She fell out the window. But the window blew out inward. Yeah. And I, like I said, so, I can see the detectives figuring out a line of reasoning. Because if there weren't any, like, physical marks on her, then but, the only conclusion they can draw is that she fell. Not that she was pushed or that there was anyone in, else in the house. I don't know. I, I, I think for, for me, that's the, the... Like, maybe maybe they would have reasoned that, oh, well, the girls came home, a couple of ravens flew the fuck out. Or crows, I think they called them. They look too big to be crows, honestly. Yeah. Um, so, like, oh, these crows must have flown in through the window and then startled her and she fell. Like, I, honestly, this is a really minuscule point we're arguing. Yeah, no, I know. I just, I think out of out of all of the things, that's the one thing where I was just like, how were the detectives this, this bad at their jobs? Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's where that, that, little, that little stick in the mud for me is like, how yeah. are they this bad? Because the glass is blown in, in from out... And you're saying she fell out of the window, not a scratch on her, except for where she hit the ground. Well, that just means timeline. Window blew in, and then she falls. Not, she fell through the window. Like, I, I guess, but again, there's not a scratch on her, and there was glass, still shards of glass in the window. I don't know, I'm being nitpicky for, yeah, you for, are. for no real good reason. This is correct. Yeah, I know. Anyway. Anyway. Oh, the the one... Okay, so the one extremely minuscule thing that bothered me was that Harry keeps saying we in his, like, original introduction monologue thing when they're witches. The girls never ask who we is. Yeah. He's using a plural pronoun, and they're just skating the fuck over it. They don't even notice. Like, this is before Maggie finds the whole smoothie demon page which i thought was hilarious yeah um like he and it happened multiple times where he's like we don't know we aren't sure we have no idea like who is we they never ask they and never ask me. but but I'm, I'm assuming... i mean i understand it would have taken even more time that the episode didn't really have to go into that but like and i'm assuming that they're assuming that white lighters aren't just one person so that kind of tracks in that regard in that i mean yeah. i am i am what they call a white lighter we do this and so i'm i'm kind of okay with the fact that they didn't ask more in this episode yeah i hope they'll and get i'm to sure it. yeah i'm sure that we will learn more as they go along but the other thing that that for me i i don't know necessarily that bringing in the source of all evil as the main villain in episode one well, would again, be my that's, go-to. Well, that's you comparing it with the previous series. Yeah, I know. But, like, the source of all evil is, like, the big bad. Like, he, the source of all evil. Mm, but he also says that the third sign hasn't happened yet. He just reads the result, which is the whole source of all evil thing. So we don't yet know what the third sign of whatever is happening is. True. You know, the first one was Trump. Um, <laughs> well, he's like, this is much too flowery. It's your president. We'll just yeah. fast track that shit. 
Yeah. Also, that book does not look 2,000 pages thick. No, it really doesn't. Though I do like the look of it. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to because it didn't look like it was a big deal. Mm Mm-hmm. But I actually really kind of like the look of it. Mm-hmm. It, it was simplistic, but not overly simplistic. I think it had more embellishment than the previous book. Yeah. But, like, but it, wasn't it made like, sense embellishment. Yeah, it didn't look like... It looked reinforced, which for an old, old book would be good. Yeah, it, it looked like it was a magic item mm-hmm. instead of... A, a large binder that has gotten bigger, you know? <laughs> or a composition notebook. Yeah, like, I, I enjoyed that. I kind of hated the fact that the Ouija board looked like it was just, you know, bought at the local Toys R Us. Yeah, but when you're a witch, like, I you know. can use anything. No, I get that. But, like, I think that was my... I did, uh, yeah, you're, I think you're comparing it to the previous Ouija yeah. board. Which I'd almost forgotten about until I watched this. I'm like, oh, God, they did use a Ouija board yeah, the spirit in the original board, series. The spirit, the spirit board, board was was made out of a freaking tree trunk. Like, it, was it was driftwood huge. or something. Yeah, like, it was... That it was, was cool. Yeah, I liked the original, the, the spirit board, because it was... Ornate, and it looked like it was something that was made for mm-hmm. the family. And this literally just looks like somebody went to the local toy store and grabbed a, a Ouija board off the off the wall. Mm-hmm. Which I kind of get it because Ouija boards are literally everywhere, everywhere, and you yeah. can just go to your local toy store and buy one because yep. that's they're meant for entertainment. But the fact that it didn't look in any way personalized to them was kind of sad to me. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll get a lot more personalized things. To yeah, them in and the I, future, I, though. yeah. Well, I think that that I, I purposefully didn't watch the coming up in the next episode thing. I didn't even see one. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there was one. I, I don't I think know. there was. I don't know. There may have been. There may have not. Because been. I watched, I watched through the entire thing twice, and I haven't, I didn't see any next time on. Which they may just not be doing that. I don't know. How did you watch it on the CW? Okay, well, then maybe that's why, because I watched it from my DVR. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so I I, I pers- purposefully did not watch the next time on, because I don't want to know what's coming up. Mm-hmm. I, I went into this knowing what was from the trailer, and I don't want to do that for the next one. I, okay. I just want to go in blind and see how I feel about it. That's fair. Because that's kind of how I'm feeling this. Yeah, and see, I like to see all of the things because that gives me more time to process them. I like having time to process. Yeah, I get that. Um, okay, we've definitely covered everything I wrote down. Except for one thing, which I thought was actually a really cute callback to the original series. Right when they all get untied in the attic, Mel attempts to use her power on Harry, and she does oh, it yeah. Holly's way. Yeah. She like tries moving her hands and flicking them, and I don't... I, that was a really cute decision that I don't know who made it, but I really enjoyed it because it was very small and very like, hey, look. Yeah. Um, that was that was kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I want to bring up was the vanquishing spell. Yes. Yes. I did also write it down. I did not bother to translate it. I did. Yes. Yeah. So the, the original text of the spell that they use to vanquish Tadius in Latin in Latin is timor tuus fortitude tua femine ultimum exitum which, which is translated very roughly very roughly translates to the fear of death is the ultimate strength will be women yeah did you use google translate for that yeah Okay. Yeah. Now, is, any, like I said, roughly translated, because if I put in a period at the end, it changed the translation. That's hilarious. But that's Latin, yeah. honestly. It's yeah. a very dead language exactly. for a reason. Exactly. I enjoy the fact that that if you you switch it into two sentences, is the fear of death is the ultimate, strength will be women. I, I'm kind of okay with that. Or mm-hmm. even, or even like, you know, the fear of death is the <laughs> ultimate strength will be women. I kind of like that one too. Like, <laughs> I enjoy it. It's, it's a little more flowery than the power of three will set us free. Yeah. And I like that. It, most of the spells from the original series were kind of uh, cheesy. Yeah, a little shall bit. Shall we say? A little bit. My biggest annoyance, and this is, again, it's a nitpicky thing, but my biggest annoyance is that 
Macy is the one who comes with, who who finds this Latin phrase. Yeah. She says it once, and then the other girls are able to say it immediately. And they're able to repeat it. I'm sorry. I don't know about you, but I cannot hear a Latin phrase once and just be able to repeat it verbatim perfectly. I mean... Instantly. I have practice with that shit from choir because, like... I do that thing a lot of times where if I don't know what words or notes I'm supposed to be singing, I'll put it on, like, a slight delay and I'll listen for whatever someone else is singing and I'll just follow them. Yeah. So it won't be in sync, but I will have sung it. (laughs) Also, if I don't know what note I'm supposed to be on, I listen and I find a note that's already there and I just sing that one. Yeah, I guess. The other thing that I do enjoy... Again, slightly comparing between the original series and this one is I like that the sisters can use their powers on each other and it's not a detriment mm-hmm. that this this whole like can't use it for personal gain thing we hasn't get, come up yet. We might get to that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I like that that like Maggie was able to to read Macy's mind and we didn't hear it, but we heard her say that she that she I'm yeah. sorry I listened to your thoughts that sort of thing. I enjoyed that when when the, the the smoke and the fog and the ice and the whatever was happening and they couldn't see each other, yeah. Macy was able to use her power to bring them all together. I liked that. Yeah. Because that seemed like a thing that you should be able to do. Yeah. You know? And so I enjoyed that of like, like my power is that I can move things with my mind, so why can't I move you closer to me? I'm wondering... Because I I did originally like the convention of you can't use your powers on other good witches. I'm wondering if they might be, like, slightly altering that to, like, you can't use your powers against yeah. other witches. Like, you can use it on them as long as it's cooperative. Yeah. But if you're trying to be adversarial, it won't work. Yeah, that I would like. That would be fun. That would be nice. That would be a good plot element to bring into it. Yeah, is, is you can't you can't be... You can't use your powers against them in combat, in combat I whatever. guess. Yeah, like, but you can use your powers to aid them. Yeah. And I like that. That that would be a nice a nice change. Mm-hmm. I like that. And would lead to some interesting storylines, I think. Yeah. Um, can I just say again how Harry clearly lives for the drama? Like, right at the end, they hear, they read the thing on the Ouija board... And they're like, Harry, and he steps out of the shadows. And he's like, girls, I'm here. Or ladies, rather. Yeah. I'm here. I'm right here. And I'm like, oh. See, that is what makes me think that he's not going to be a bad guy. Because that bit right there is so extremely over the top pointed toward, don't trust Harry. Harry bad. I'm like, well, that obviously can't be true. Yeah. Because this is daytime drama. Well, primetime drama. Like. Yeah, I think that the biggest it's, thing It's in very that much me, a trope that's been used so much. I know. No longer ever believe it. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing for me is is the, the don't trust Harry. And as soon as they say his name, he shows up. Which is a white lighter thing. You know, you call Honestly, for him and he shows up. That I'm makes wondering, sense. But... I'm wondering, this would be really dumb, but I'm wondering whether or not that message had a period after the don't. Because that seems, like, if they're contacting their mother, if it's actually their mother, mm-hmm. it could have been two sentences. True. Don't, as in don't try to contact me, trust Harry. Yeah. Which could, which would be really stupid and funny and yeah, very, I mean, very, like, comedy of errors, but dramedy of errors. Yeah. I... Well, that see. or it's it's not their mom and it's just someone trying to tell them or maybe maybe we'll get a whole scene in the next episode where he's like uh yeah you don't know who you're contacting with these things like these things are dangerous and you don't use them until you've been trained for a fucking reason yeah but of I, course he has to be a drama queen about it yeah i i like i like science sister yes um and i'm i'm interested i like that she see... found a vanquish that was just science based yeah because magic is just science we don't know yet. Yes, exactly. And I like Thank that. Thank you, MCU. Yeah, I like that a lot. And and my only real annoyance with the the whole like green goo, ectoplasm whatever thing that they're doing mm-hmm. is that she had a a an app on her iPhone. She had a really with, good lens magnifier with a lens thing, and like that. She's from, a scientist. That no, that tickled I, me. I get that, but like it was just the fact I'm like, really, there's an app for that, 
really? <laughs> well, no, it's just she has an attachment. It's not an app. It's just she's using the phone. Like, I keep seeing all of these things, and, like, it doesn't work with my phone case, but there are, like, little clip-on lenses that you can use to magnify a whole hell of a lot. Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. I just, I, like I said, it was, I think... It was a little the bit... The fact that, they're, that this has been updated because mm-hmm. now cell phones are are an everyday occurrence. Yeah. Um, I, I just think it's funny that it's like, that was the first thing I was like, oh, what's this green goo? Hold on. Let me science this. Let me, let me, um, get out my microscope attachment for my phone. Yeah. And, and I, and that's why I think like, it was, a, it I was enjoy a little her convenient. a lot. It was a little convenient, but, but, but I didn't sense. mind it. Yeah. It was convenient in a good way. Yeah. As opposed to convenient in a convenient way. Yes. It was not a la convenience. It was just convenient. Yeah. TV trope. Yeah. And, and I like the fact that they are bringing in a bit of the science mm-hmm. because it works. Yeah. I also enjoy that because, because the potion making is a science. Mm-hmm. It is. It's, it's one part of this and three parts of that. And, and yeah, it all makes of these... busy researching how telekinesis would work if it existed. Yeah. And so I like the fact that it was like, oh, well, this is just a thing. We need this to balance it out. What? Oh, Baking soda or baking powder or whatever it was. Like, like okay. Sodium bicarbonate baking soda. Baking soda. Like, th- I think that's the biggest thing is like, oh, here's a science way to do this. We can tell if, if this is a thing because just throw baking soda at them. Mm-hmm. And, and then a cute little puff of black. Yeah. And so, and then, and then, and of then course, you get the. And it didn't harm. Are they going to have to, they're going to have to find that dog, depossess it. Uh, well, unless the depossessing Brian depossess the dog. Yeah. Because that was a cute dog. I don't want to hurt the dog. Yeah. I it was very funny though. I, I think that was part of of again my my bias in this mm-hmm. is the boy is telling you not to walk through the woods. So of course she's gonna walk through the woods. Oh look, cute dog. Countdown for when the dog turns evil. There it goes. You know like there was That was in one of the trailers too. Oh, yeah, I only saw one, I only watched one trailer, so I didn't even see the dog thing in the trailer. But yeah, but, it's very horror movie trope. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, there are a lot of things that they did in this particular episode where, and this is why I say I, I'm excited to see where it goes from here because now we're past the pilot, mm-hmm. is that it did become a, here's this moment, give it a second, okay, now he's evil. You know, like there's a lot of, of, tropes that they've been doing that, that they did in this episode that yeah. that you knew were going to happen okay now we're past them can mm-hmm. we move on yeah and so i'm i'm very excited to see where it goes and i'm i'm very happy that i didn't hate it yeah i didn't hate it either. i didn't i, I had like, a lot of fun watching it I ha- yeah exactly i think that's the biggest thing is is yes it cannot compare to the original yeah I because was... because we are so ingrained in the original and how it it meant like how everything that it meant mm-hmm. to us the original will always be there though and i think that's the biggest thing is is a lot of the people who seem to think that this show is ruining their childhood or whatever because it, you know you can't compare it to the you can't be the original you need to be here's, like mel and let go of your anger yes you do but here's my thing right and this is this is why i have no no real issue with it is that yes? There are shows that are getting revivals with the original cast, like Roseanne did, mm-hmm. and and Murphy Brown did. They're coming back with the original cast, and it's it's trying to tell a new story with these same characters played by these same actors. Those are revivals. Yeah, this is not a revival. It's and, a reboot. And but see, hold on. But I think I I don't mind the revival thing. That's great. I don't even remind. I don't even mind a reboot thing. Like MacGyver is a reboot. M- Magnum PI is a reboot. Hawaii Five-O is a reboot. There's a lot of shows that are telling the stories or that are that are telling stories with the same characters played by new actors for a new audience. Mm-hmm. And I don't have an issue with that because the stories are good. Like I liked Hawaii Five-O for the first couple of seasons. I I've stopped watching it now, but that's just because I just can't deal with where it went. It yeah. got a little it got a little too hokey for me and I'm like, "Okay, I can't deal anymore." Yeah. But I'm still liking MacGyver. Um, Magnum, I've just started watching Magnum PI. I never watched the original on any of these shows. And so for me, this is now my original. Mm-hmm. And I've tried to go back and watch the original MacGyver and I did not enjoy it. 
No, because it was written at a different time. Exactly. When different TV conventions were popular. Exactly. And like, that's, 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 that's the a biggest lot of, thing. That's a lot of why modern audiences who maybe didn't see the original Charmed are hearing about this reboot. And they're like, well, what the fuck is the original? And they're probably going back. And, like, honestly, there's a lot of chaff in all of that wheat. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing that, that people have to remember. Like, already, this it, episode is far better than some of the episodes we've covered of the original Charmed. Well. Like, hello, Wedding from Hell? Yeah. Like, this this episode, personally, if I were going to rate it based on just, like, how I feel about it, it would be, like, uh, somewhere between a 6.5 and a 7 out of mm-hmm. 10 for me. Because I enjoy it, I would and have watched it again, and I think it did accomplish what it set out to do did it accomplish it perfectly no i do not actually recall what i gave the pilot episode of the original series when we rated that but cat's gonna look that up right now so well so, yeah. i guess apparently i i rated the original pilot a seven as well so. yeah you were you were a six and a half so this seven is about and, and, the show is and about i was a par. seven eight yeah with the original and for this one for me personally i would give this one like a five and a half six because it you're you're kind of miring yourself in the original series though and you've admitted that yeah but i think also it's it's because there was so much of message Message, with a capital m that it just felt forced and so while i probably won't go back and rewatch the this particular pilot i'm giving it a chance Mm -hmm. and and i'm hoping that the next one will be better and it's not it's still not like It's not the worst thing I've ever watched. And if I was forced to watch it again, I'd be okay with it. Mm -hmm. But it's not one that I would pick. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing for me. So for me, it's like a five and a half, six. Um, But I think the biggest thing is that people who watched the original that are so hell-bent on the original is the only one, rah, 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 that can never be another, rah, rah, rah. Those people need to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Because... This isn't for you. No. And that's the thing they have to remember is, is yes, you can, you can be all about your fun is wrong, but guess what? This isn't for you. This isn't, this isn't meant to be a, a brand new ruining your childhood show. This is a charm for a new generation of people who didn't see the original, who wouldn't like the original. And that's the biggest thing. And and that's why, like, I was talking to, to, to somebody else and they were saying that, that they weren't sure about, you know, okay, yeah, people of color and, and feminist agenda and blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, because that's what we need now. Mm-hmm. We need yeah, they're people of color they're as representation. They were originally going to do, like, a prequel thing. And then they were like, hang on a second, based on the feedback we're getting... This isn't going to work. This is not what audiences necessarily want or need. Hey, you know what we could do? We could just make what we would want to for a modern audience. Yeah. And this is the result. And I'm like, okay, knowing that was your intent, you have accomplished that. And yeah. I can I appreciate think, that. I think that's the biggest thing is is we need the representation of people of color, mm-hmm. of people in, in the LGBT plus yeah. community. We need that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm a I'm super cool stoked. with that. I'm definitely super stoked about the LGBT representation Mm -hmm. because you have an interracial gay couple, whether or not they are both gay, they are in a, yeah, they're in a female on female relationship. Yeah. Or, or they were, and they probably will be, um, probably are, who knows? We don't know if it was X sex. I actually had to watch the captions for that one. I'm like, wait, what the fuck did Maggie say? Yeah. Um, but like, and, and like female detective who's clearly the one in charge. I don't think we even get a name for the other guy. Yeah, I don't remember. But yeah, like I, she's I think, a detective. I, I think that that's the biggest thing is this is not the original charm, yeah. and that's a good thing because the original charm still exists for those of us who want yeah. to watch it. Go back, watch it to your heart's content. Write your fan fiction. I probably won't read it, but you know. I don't, I've read, I don't read I've, fan fiction, so... I've read so much charm fan fiction in my day. I think I actually downloaded one because it wasn't on, like, fanfiction.net or, like... I, this is well before I discovered AO3. It was literally on a rando blog. Mm. I think it was called Child's Play. And it might have been, like, a script. Like a... No idea. Like a TV script format. 
Yeah, I've I've never been a big fan of fan fiction. I just never have. I and see, I have been neglecting my actual reading because I've just been reading fan fiction sometimes. <laughs> Um, I, I think that's the biggest that's the biggest takeaway. If, if, if you get nothing else from this, that's the biggest takeaway is remembering that this is not the original Charmed and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. This is Charmed for a new generation and that's okay. And if you're gonna compare it to the original, don't do it in a, oh, they stole this from the original. They're like, no, they realized this was a convention that worked for the original that with the same concept could work for the reboot. Yeah. Like it, it in some way you need to divorce the emotionality of the plot points from like your viewing of it because it's I mean it's TV. It it's not there are only so many emotion. tropes to go around. Yeah, yeah, there really are. Yeah. I I think that's the biggest thing is is knowing that this show is trying to be an updated version of something we love. Yeah. And it's doing it in its own way, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And that the original isn't going anywhere. It's not like like they're taking the original and shutting it down so you can never see it again. It no longer exists. No, that's not what's happening. The original is still there for those of us who want to watch the original, but this is a new thing. Yeah. In that same world. Yeah, they're they're going back to the start and rebooting it as it were. Yeah. And as much as we all would have loved to have seen a revival or an but, updated mm -hmm. telling the story of the kids or yeah. whatever sequel. Yeah, sequel, a sequel world. Series. I'd have, I'd have been okay with that. That would have been cool. Mhm. Mm but I'm okay with this. Yeah. And as someone who does love the original, and, and as someone who is, you know, trying very hard to not compare this to the original, I don't hate it. And while I don't necessarily love it at this point, because it's just a little bit too forceful in what they're trying to get across mm -hmm. in this episode, I'm excited to see where it goes, and, and I... I will be very excited to watch the next one. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty much the same on all of that. Yeah, I think the the capital M message stuff didn't bother me as much because I'm like, oh well, they're clearly like doing this at the outset so they can dial it back. Yeah. But they wanted to like have the strong stance as opposed to like the weak stance, and then suddenly they're gonna dial it up later. That's not gonna work. So. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. that as being specifically a pilot convention, sort yeah. of. Yeah, and I, and I get, I I get why they did it. Mm -hmm. I just am not really a fan of how they did it. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. But you know, pilots are never the best episodes. Nope. They are rarely the best episodes. In fact, if they are the best episodes, the series probably goes downhill from there. Yeah, and I think that's the the biggest. The biggest thing yeah, is you well. don't want your pilot episode to be absolutely perfect because that's a bar that you can't raise. Yeah. And 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 then you get into the whole Dragon Ball Z power problem, which is that you have to ha keep one upping yourself every fucking episode or every fucking 20 episodes because that's how long it takes to get through a single minute of actual plot yeah. on Dragon Ball Z. Already then. I I think my biggest thing with this is the original series went for eight seasons and then went into comic books. If this show gets a full season, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. Yeah. Like if literally if it only lasts a season, but it gets that, that strong thing out there, I'd be happy. If it lasts for eight, that's awesome. I honestly would prefer five. Well, but that's, that's more like a, a it takes there generally are some shows now, that are so, around that, when Could when the gone. original charm came out, generally the idea was okay. It would take a couple of seasons to get going and start getting good, and then those next couple of seasons would be really good, and then they would start running out of steam. Yeah. So I would prefer to have five, because otherwise you get into a supernatural situation, where 
They're on 14 now. Yeah. And oh my god, the amount of dead horses that are yeah. just absolutely pulped by this point. Yeah, I love Supernatural, don't get me wrong. Although I've been hurt but... I've been hearing that the, this 14th season has been getting pretty good and I'm like yeah, I've been out for like three or four. So. Yeah, I I haven't been watching. I I caught up on the the last season that Netflix had, and and that's where I've stopped at the mm-hmm. moment. Um, I would I would prefer but, short. Uh, suffice it to say, I would prefer short and sweet to long and draggy. Yeah, and so if Charmed, if this new reboot gets three, four, five seasons, great. As long as they're like good. Good. Yeah. yeah. If it gets two. As long as they're good, I'm fine. Yeah. I think that's the, the biggest thing is is we live in a world now where if something doesn't get millions and millions and millions of views, it gets canceled really quickly. See, and I'm, I feel I'm like, sad by that. No, no, no. I don't think it's millions and millions of views. I think it's just like if it doesn't have the social media following whoever's in charge of the studio wants, then it gets canceled regardless of like what the fans want or like how well it was actually doing. Like there's a... Uh, television nowadays, like, millions and millions of views, you can't really expect on the outset because um, the whole rating system is kind of fucked because they didn't add people to, like, the Nielsen ratings. They're trying to make it be representative, but, like, they haven't added any to the new places, whatever. And they don't count, like, DVRs or whatever. Yeah. Um, But, like, no show really gets a million views. If they get, like, 30,000, that's actually successful because there's so much on TV nowadays. I, I don't like know. Like, on, think... on, at actual viewing, like, on television. Yeah. But so many, like, people have cut cables. Uh, there's a bunch of people who just DVR stuff and watch it later and maybe watch it a couple of times later. Yeah. There's people who um, pirate it on the internet because they literally can't afford all of these streaming services. I'm very glad that the CW has, like, the free app, and you can just watch it on the website. Yeah. That's, I, that's I like I like that they have that they have found new ways to get the content out there, and and I do enjoy that. I just... My, my biggest thing is I'm always worried that something is going to happen in that they're going to be like oh well we didn't get enough views let's just cancel it because nobody's watching well that's not gonna be the show's fault no i know but i'm that's why i'm glad that it's on the cw and not on fox Mm -hmm. you know yeah and they're trying to pair it off with uh supergirl so they're having like girl power sundays which i kind of like yeah i think that the biggest thing is i'm i'm also kind of glad that it's on a sunday Mm -hmm. um because then you get it on a on a weekend so that more people will hopefully watch it. Um, and they are trying to pair it with Supergirl and, and get that, like, you know, feminist girl power, women power thing out there. That's mm-hmm. great. But I just... I hope that they don't cancel it before it's time. That's my biggest thing. I hope yeah. they at least give it the full season and let that be what it is. Mm-hmm. If, and if it doesn't get renewed, that's okay. As long as they've given it the full chance that it deserves. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're done. I think we're done. Yeah. This is probably going to be a longer episode than our usual because we have to go over all of the beginning of series stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm, this is definitely going to be a podcast where it's train of thought and however long it takes us, that's what it takes us because mm-hmm. we talk things out. It's what we do. Indeed. Yes, indeed. So, so we have no sign off. <laughs>